Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay, Good morning, let... sir. Good morning, sir. Okay, let us start. Uh, remember, we have been learning chapter four, climate. Uh, last time we discussed about uh, regional variations in the climatic conditions across India. And today we shall discuss about factors affecting uh, climate of any place. Now I shall share my screen. Okay. Climatic controls or factors affecting climate of any place on the earth surface. Okay, uh, so generally there are six major uh, controls of climate of any place. They are latitude, altitude, pressure, wind system distance from the sea or continentality ocean currents and relief features so now let us uh, discuss in detail the first important factor affecting the climate of any place is latitude okay can you tell me what is a latitude? Yes, can you tell me uh, what is a latitude? Or Parallels of latitude. Le Let us say this is uh, our art, okay, and. Uh, so on art, so when you examine any glove, okay, so you may be seeing that okay, some lines are drawn horizontally like this, like this. So these lines drawn horizontally on the glove is known as lines of latitude okay actually latitude is the angle uh, formed in the center of the art so for that let us not uh, go in detail just uh, you must know that see uh, these lines drawn horizontally round the globe is known as a uh, latitude and now let us see how latitude affects uh, the climate of any place. See, due to curvature of the earth, the amount of solar energy received varies according to latitude. We know that the earth shape is a uh, sphere. Okay, we call it geoid, also known as oblate a spheroid, as you, as you are seeing here. See, actually our art is flattened at the poles here. And the shape is known as geoid. Okay, geoid. Or oblate spheroid. That is flattened at the poles. Okay, and due to the curvature of the art surface, the amount of solar energy, the amount of sunlight received, 
by the arch surface varies from one latitude to another latitude. As a result, air temperature generally decreases from the equator towards the poles. Okay, as you see here, if you move away, say for example, uh, this is equator, okay, and uh, generally we find uh, equator the highest temperature, okay, equator records the highest temperature, and as we move away from equator towards the pole, temperature decreases. So here this is North Pole, this is South Pole. Likewise, if we go towards the South Pole, then temperature decreases. So in this way, well, due to the curvature of the earth, okay, uh, temperature varies from one place to another place. Why? Now uh, let us uh, discuss why temperature decreases as we move away from equator towards the poles. Just see here, this is the surface of the earth and uh, this is the equator. Okay, let us say this is equator and here we have uh, these poles here. Let us say this is poles here. Uh, let us say this is North Pole, for example. So this is North Pole and let us say this is uh, South Pole and uh, let us say this is equator. Okay. And see, generally along the equator, okay, along the equator, uh, we find uh, almost vertical rays of the sun, like this. Okay, along the equator, we find uh, vertical rays of the sun. And if we move away from the equator, then the, uh, the sunlight, okay, sun's rays incline like this. Just see here. Uh, here also, say for example, let us say a sun is here, okay. Sun is here, let us say this is our sun, okay. And along the equator, we find vertical rays of the sun. Okay, see, let us say this is a tangent, and the angle form here is almost 90 degree. And where is uh, nearby the pole? Let us say here. Okay. Nearby the pole, so let us say this is a tangent, okay. And the angle form here, angle form here is less than 90 degree. And that is why, uh, as you are seeing in this uh, diagram, just see here. Here, these are the sun's rays, okay. And uh, the sun's rays, when it is inclined, so it is spread in a larger area, as you see here, okay. Here. Uh, uh, near the poles, the sun's rays are spreading, covering a larger area as compared to the as compared to the uh, this vertical rays. As I told you, uh, along the equator, we find vertical rays here, vertical rays here, and uh, since the sun's rays are vertical, so it covers a small area. As you are seeing here, okay, vertical rays cover a smaller area and that is why heat is concentrated over this smaller area. Whereas in the case of inclined rays, uh, the sunlight is covering or spreading a larger area and that is why the heat is distributing over a larger area. And that is why we feel cold here, okay, we feel cold here. So for example, in the morning or in the evening, we feel somewhat cooler than the noon time. Likewise, uh, in the winter season, okay, in the winter season, uh, say we feel uh, cool. Why? Because the sun's rays are inclined in the winter season. And uh, whereas in the summer season, the sun's rays are, okay, vertical, almost a vertical, or the sun is overheat. And that is why, uh, 
we feel hot. Okay. Any question, boys and girls? Any question, boys and girls? Are you clear? Remember, along the equator, okay, along the equator, let us say, the sun's rays is vertical like this. And where is away from the equator, it is inclined. Okay, it is inclined. And so we have learned that uh, inclined rays cover a larger area as you see here, whereas vertical rays are concentrating over a smaller area as you see here. And that is why we feel hot here in the case of vertical rays because heat is concentrated in a smaller area. And in this case, okay, the heat is distributing over a larger area. Any question, boys and girls? No, sir. Then another important factor affecting climate is uh, altitude. Do you know what is the meaning of altitude? Altitude means height of a place from the sea level, okay? As one goes from the surface of the earth to higher altitude, the atmosphere becomes less dense and temperature decreases, okay? And hills are therefore cooler during the summer. So this is uh, another important factor. Just see here. Uh, let us say here we have a mountain here and here we have the sea okay let us say this is the sea level and altitude means height of a place for example this is the uh, top of the uh, mountain okay this is the peak this is the top of the mountain and uh, if we extend a horizontal line like this and again if we draw a vertical line like this and here this is what this is what we call altitude okay this is called altitude altitude means height of a place from the sea level as i told you this is the sea level and uh, height of this uh, top of the mountain from the sea level is known as altitude and uh, see uh, here on the top of the mountain, the atmosphere is uh, very, very clean and clear. Okay, no dust particles are found. At the same time, if we increase, okay, if we move upwards towards the sky, then uh, the air becomes denser, uh, sorry, less, uh, less dense. Okay, the air becomes uh, this uh, less dense. That is uh, rarer and uh, rarer. And that is why uh, we feel cool on the top of the mountain and uh, whereas in the low-lying areas, uh, the air is, uh, okay, denser. The air is denser than the top of the mountain. At the same time, uh, nearby the, uh, this in the low-lying areas, okay, in the low-lying areas or in the plain areas, we find more water vapor. Water vapor, you know, this is a very good absorber of the art radiation. See, the sun's light, uh, okay, sun's rays will strike on the surface. And again, the surface will re-radiate back uh, the heat which has been absorbed by the art. And uh, that is known as uh, art radiation or terrestrial radiation. And the water vapor present in the air is a very good absorber of the art radiation, terrestrial radiation. Likewise, dust particles are also a very good absorber of the art radiation. And uh, we have learned that uh, we find more amount of water uh, vapor and the dust particles in the low-lying areas, whereas uh, on the top of the mountain, we find a least amount of water vapor and the dust particles. And that is why absorp absorption 
absorption of the art radiation is less on the top of the mountain and that is why we feel cold on the top of the mountain whereas we feel hot in the low-lying areas so for example if you visit uh, ZNB Ukrul or ZNB Mao which is very higher than the uh, Impal Valley okay uh, say so their temperature is low we feel cold okay as compared to the ZNVs uh, located uh, in the plain areas so this is another factor okay any question boys and girls no sir okay remember you must know that uh, when we climb up a mountain then we feel cool and uh, when we uh, get down okay in the low-lying areas uh, we feel hot and another important factor is the pressure and the wind system of any area okay depends on the latitude and the altitude of the place and uh, thus it influences the temperature and rainfall actually uh, let us say this is a uh, surface okay and uh, see when the surface of the earth is intensely heated by the sunlight then what happened when the surface of the earth is intensely heated by sunlight okay in that case uh, low pressure will be formed here low pressure will be formed here whereas in the colder areas uh, we find high pressure and the wind blows from from which place to which place yes tell me wind blows from high to low or low to high okay wind blows from high pressure towards the low pressure and when there is pressure differences on the earth surface okay uh, local wind or planetary wind wind will prevail when there is pressure differences then wind will be blowing on the surface of the earth remember okay and uh, most of the time uh, the differences in the pressure condition over the earth surface is created by the temperature differences when there is differences in the temperature then it creates pressure differences when there is high temperature there will be low pressure when there is low temperature there will be high pressure and remember wind blows from high pressure to low pressure okay and another important factor affecting the climate of any place is distance from the sea okay so last time also we talked about the moderating influence of the uh, sea the sea exerts a moderating influence on climate as the distance from the sea increases its moderating influence decreases and uh, people experience extreme weather conditions in the interior of the continent and this is known as continentality so what do you mean by continentality continentality means very hot during the summer and the very cold during the winter that condition is known as continentality okay just uh, see here see <clears throat> you know a lane is uh, opaque okay light cannot pass through and that is why the sunlight okay will be uh, absorbing only a thin layer of the earth surface here here we have insulation insulation means uh, the sunlight and uh, when the sunlight strikes on the surface then since the lens is compact and opaque that light cannot pass through then the heat will be absorbing only in a thin layer of the earth whereas water you know this is uh, transferring and the uh, sunlight can pass through deep into the interior of the ocean and that is why oceans take a longer time to warm up and uh, to to cool, uh, cool down 
where is land okay actually it takes uh, less time to warm up okay uh, land warms up very quickly and cools down very quickly and that is why see here uh, if so for example this is a very big continent and if our country is located here in the middle of the uh, continent then oceanic influence okay oceanic influence will be will not be there and that is why we will feel very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter that condition is known as continentality let's see here that condition is known as continentality that means temp temperature conditions are extreme that is very hot in summer very cold in winter whereas uh, regions located along the sea coast see for example here here there will be moderating influence of the ocean and that is why uh, okay the temperature in the summer will not be so high and in the winter also uh, not so cold because of the moderating influence of the sea water as you will see here do you remember this uh, land breeze and the sea breeze see here i think you might have learned in the lower classes also see during the daytime okay sun is here during the daytime uh, this uh, the sunlight hits on the surface and uh, because of that uh, land becomes uh, heated warms up very quickly as i told you just a few minutes ago okay and that is why uh, we will find low pressure here over the course sea course whereas uh, as i told you uh, sea water takes a longer time to warm up and that is why i uh, still during the daytime also over the sea you will find high pressure and that is why wind blows from sea towards the land and this is known as a uh, sea breeze and generally the wind blowing from the sea is a uh, cold and thus moderating the temperature of the coastal areas this is happening during the daytime okay during the daytime land is warmer sea is cooler and what happened in the night time see in the night time so there will be rapid radiation cooling as i told you uh, sunlight can warm up can heat up only a thin layer and that is why during the night time uh, land cools down very very quickly and that is why you will find high pressure over the land and in the night time sea water will be warm okay since uh, it takes time to cool down and that is why you will find low pressure over the sea and therefore uh, wind blows from land to sea and this is known as land breeze and because of this sea breeze and the land breeze okay the coastal areas are not so hot and not so cold that is coastal areas have moderating influence okay and that is why uh, that is why see here we have equable climate and uh, since the interior part of the continent are not affected by the oceans we feel very hot and uh, in the summer and uh, very cold in the winter known as continentality okay next we have ocean currents along with onshore winds affect climate of coastal areas actually ocean currents uh, see uh, here actually see let us say this is a big ocean and uh, sometime in the ocean also uh, water moves okay in in a narrow channel just like uh, like this actually not the whole body is not moving but here in some places the water is flowing just like a river and uh, this flowing of water okay in the form of uh, this current or channel is known as ocean currents and uh, we have two types of ocean currents okay uh, warm currents and uh, cold currents 
and just uh, see this map so here this map wall map shows uh, ocean currents okay the red arrow the red lines represent warm current and uh, this blue color represents cold currents and the sea uh, in the areas where the coastal areas are washed by the warm current then temperature will be rising up and the areas where cold currents are striking on the coast those coastal areas will be cooled down okay so as explained here for example any coastal area with warm or cold currents flowing past it will be warm or cool if the winds are onshore that means if the coastal areas okay say as i told you for example in this uh, eastern coast of africa since it is washing by the warm current temperature will be rising up and uh, in the other cases when it is uh, uh, okay striking by the cold current then temperature will be lowering so in this way ocean currents affect the temperature of any place or coastal areas <laughs> then why here is a question okay why most of the world deserts are located in the western margin of continents in the subtropics let me repeat why most of the world deserts are located in the western margins of the continents in the subtropics you must know that most of the desert okay most of the hot desert of the world are located along the western margins of the continent western part of the continent in the subtropics why because if you see these uh, ocean current maps just see here the western margins of the continent are affected by the uh, these uh, cold currents just see here here also okay all the western margins of the continents along the uh, within the tropics here that is between the tropic of cancer and the uh, tropic of capricorn are affected by the cold currents and you must know that when there is cold current then there would be no rainfall okay when you you must know that when uh, a coastal area is affected by the cold current then there will not be rainfall and when there is a uh, warm current along a coast then there will be rainfall and that is why see here northern part of africa here uh, it is uh, affected by the cold canary current and that is why here we find sahara desert here sahara desert is here why Sahara Desert has been formed? So this is mainly due to the okay, due to the influence of the cold Canary current. And likewise, in the western part of the southern Africa here, we find Kalahari Desert. Why? Because we have cold Bengula current here. Okay. And likewise, say here along the peruvian uh, coast also here we have atacama desert why there has been a desert because of the cold peruvian current and here also we have this uh, arizona desert okay and here also we have this uh, uh, western australian uh, desert is there okay one desert actually this is a arid area desert area so in this way uh most of the uh, desert of the world are formed okay on the western margins of the continent because the western margins of the continents are affected by the uh, cold currents okay so this is the answer not only these other important factors also there that can be discussed later but the main uh, reason is that uh, these western margins of the continents are affected okay uh, by the cold currents 
And remember, when there is colder rain, then there is no rainfall. So last important factor is uh, relief. Okay, relief uh, to plays a major role in determining the climate of a place. High mountains act as a barrier for cold and uh, or hot winds, and they may also cause precipitation if they are high enough and lie in the path of the rain-bearing winds. And uh, the leeward side of the mountain remains relatively dry. Okay, so do you know, remember about the orographic rainfall? The sea here, about the uh, uh, this one, the first one, see here, high mountains act as a barrier for cold and hot winds. Let us see how. Let us say this is the Tibetan Plateau and here we have the Himalayan mountain, okay, and here uh, we have uh, this Indian Ocean is here, Indian Ocean, and the cold winds from Siberia, okay, actually uh, cold winds are heavy, are heavier than the warm winds, and uh, because of that, these cold winds cannot climb up a very high mountain. So in this way, Cold winds from Siberia and the Tibetan Plateau are protected by the Himalayan mountain. Okay, so this is one explanation. And uh, sometimes, see, the rain bearing winds, okay, from the oceans are, okay, blowing towards the lane. And uh, when it uh, recesses a mountain slope, it is forced to rise upwards and when the wind is forced to rise upward it will be cooled down and the cloud will be formed okay and because of that there will be heavy rainfall and a such type of rainfall is known as what such type of rainfall is known as oro orographic rainfall in geography I think you might have learned in the lower classes also, as you are seeing here, okay, just see here, just see here, uh, from the sea, okay, rain bearing wind is uh, forced to rise up the slope of the mountain, then it is cooled down, clouds are formed, then there is rainfall, okay. And uh, this side of the uh, mountain, this uh, side of the mountain uh, where the wind, okay, is striking and uh, where the rainfall is uh, happening is known as a windward side. And uh, the rain bearing wind after crossing the mountain becomes dry because the water vapor uh, is, al is already precipitated on this side. And uh, here, after crossing the mountain uh, peak, then the wind becomes dry at the same time when the wind is uh, uh, descending uh, okay, down the slope of the mountain, it will be warm up due to the adiabatic heating. Remember, when the wind is coming down on the earth's surface in the low-lying area, it is heated, it is warm up. Okay, and when the wind is moving upwards towards the sky, it is cooled down. This process is known as adiabatic heating and cooling. Okay, so the other side of the mountain uh, will be no rainfall or little rainfall. And uh, this side of the mountain is known as leeward side. And uh, the area where there is little rainfall is known as rain shadow area. Okay, so in this way, uh, relief or the landform affects uh, the climate of any place. Okay, are you clear any question boys and girls? No sir. No sir. Okay then. Uh, if you then have uh, questions, then uh, let us stop here for today. Thank you very much uh, for joining my class. Thank you all.